The word of God is so important. God made us, you know that. He made us. And we were made from God's word. Our physical bodies came from the dust of the ground. And so, our physical bodies must remain connected to the dust of the ground. Every living thing must remain connected to its source. Plants were made from the ground, they must remain connected to the ground. They cannot live in the air. Fishes were made from water, so they live in water. They cannot live on the ground. Your human spirit came from God, from God's spirit, and must remain connected. To God's Spirit. So every living thing must remain connected to its source. And if you remain connected to the Spirit of God, you will live a triumphant life. The triumphant life belongs to every one of us. To enjoy it, you must first believe that there is such a life. There is such a life. You must first believe that there is such a life. And then you follow the principles of that life. Last night, we got to discussing the law of faith. You remember? I know many of you here tonight were not here last night because you were only allowed to come tonight. But we did say that it would be a serial teaching from the first day. So you have to get all the tapes because they are all connected and one continues from the other like tonight we are taking off from where we left off last night and last night we took off from where we left off the previous night hallelujah and we said that there were three important laws that we wanted to consider in our discussion of the subject of faith and we talked about the law of liberty and then we talked about the law of the spirit of life and then the law of faith and we got to talking about the law of faith and arrived at the 17th verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Romans would you turn there now the fourth chapter of the book of Romans tell somebody anything is possible Hallelujah. Anything is possible. You know one thing I'm so glad about? You have a Bible for yourself. So whatever I'm sharing with you, you can go back on your own and research it and find out whether or not it's true. Is that okay? Isn't that wonderful? I think that's great. I think we're blessed. Yes, you can always look it up yourself. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. 
Say this with me. I'm going to live a great life. I said, say this with me. I'm going to live a great life. Now, you say it again, and this time, I want you to mean it with all your heart and say, I'm going to live a great life. One moment, then say this, and I will live free of sickness, free of infirmities, and live prosperously in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? It is so important that you make your faith declaration about your life. I've told you, if you don't say anything, something will still happen. The trouble is, it's what you don't want that will happen. All right, now I want to make another point that's important, just like the one I just said. You see, if you have a garden and you do not sow any seeds in your garden, you don't plant anything in the garden, something will still grow. What are you going to have? Weeds. Now, the, the, the lives of many Christians are like that. They don't realize that they have something to do about their lives. So they think whatever will be, will be. And the only things that will be are the things they don't want. Because it's not God's responsibility to do something about your life. Because he's already done something by sending Jesus and sending the Holy Ghost. It's our responsibility now to do something with what he has given to us. You must say that you will live a great life. You must say it if you're going to have it. You must. If you don't say it, you can't have it. Sickness comes to those who do not say that they will continually live in health. Those who do not continually proclaim divine health are the ones who welcome sickness. Sickness has to come to them. They're like the weeds growing in the garden. Yes, you didn't do anything wrong. It's like the man, he didn't sow anything in his garden. He would say, I didn't sow the wrong seeds. Where did they come from? Yes. Where did they come from? If you had sowed the right thing, you have the right results. Now you refuse to sow the, the right thing. They will come from the ground. Why? Because according to the law of God, plants were commanded to come out of the soil. So if you don't plant anything, something will come out of it. Hallelujah. Okay, so we are in Romans chapter number 4 and from the 17th verse. Hallelujah. You are refusing arthritis. You don't want arthritis in your body. No strokes. No chest pains. No headaches. No migraines. Are you hearing me? No diabetes. No heart trouble. No blood infection. You will not have any of that. I refuse to be sick. Hallelujah. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. 
before him whom he believed, even God. Now, you're going to underline this part. He says, even God, say God. God. Good. God who quickeneth the dead. That means makes alive the dead. He brings the dead to life. God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. He calls things that do not exist as though they already existed. That is God's way. He calls things that be not as though they were. He said to Abraham, you can see that in the first part of the verse. He, called, he said to Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. And the man had no child. And yet God said to him, I have made you a father of many nations. He didn't say, I shall make you. He said, I have made you so. When the man as yet had no child, God said, I have made you a father. He calls things that be not as though they were. He didn't say, I will make you a father. He said, I have made you a father. It was up to the man now to do something about it. God is saying to you, I have made you a success. I have made you healthy and strong. I have made you prosperous. I have made you priests and kings. The law of faith. The law of faith. He calls things that be not as though they were. He gives life to the dead. In anything, to him, nothing is too late. He brings life to the dead. To him, nothing is too late. Anything is possible. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And it tells us about Abraham here. That God said to him, I have made thee a father of many nations. So he continues his story about Abraham which he was already talking about in the previous verses. So in the 18th verse still talking about Abraham he said who against hope now I want you to notice this Abraham believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that be not as though they were he tells us the kind of God that Abraham believed in is a God who gives life to the dead and calls things that do not exist as though they already existed. Abraham believed in that kind of God. That's the God he trusted in. The God who gives life to the dead. Now look at it. Who against hope. In other words, when the situation had become hopeless. Naturally hopeless. He believed in hope. You know the meaning of that statement? Let me just tell you. Very simple. It's so powerful. Against hope, he believed in hope. He's not saying that he believed that this was his hope. And so he believed in his hope. No, against hope. He believed in hope, meaning that he created substance out of his hope. And that's exactly what Bible says faith is. It is the sub substance of things hoped for. He hoped for it, and so he believed in hope. 
So he created it. That's what the Bible says. Abraham believed God. I want you to understand that he's not just talking about mental believing, especially when you understand that this was lifted from the Old Testament. And the Hebrew construction meant that Abraham made an unqualified committal to Jehovah. In other words, it was faith, not just accepting the reality of something in form of believing. No, he cast himself on Jehovah. That's faith. He had absolute confidence, absolute trust in Jehovah. So against hope, he created substance out of his hope. As far as he was concerned, that which he had pictured, he made positive. You remember his name had been changed from Abram to Abraham, father of many father of many he created substance out of it he called himself the right name father of many he was called supposed father assumed father but now he called himself father of many because God said I have made you the father of many so he began to say I am the father of many he introduced himself to others as the father of many I am father of many as yet he had no children but he called himself father of many father of many what happened what happened it was based on a scripture that we read yesterday second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 he said I believed therefore have I spoken you remember that night the Bible says that God brought Abraham out you know and asked him to look at the time he was still called Abraham he said look at the stars and count them if you're able to number them and he went out and looked the Bible says and he believed in the Lord that day he believed and God said now you're ready from your believing you can answer the right name your name is Abraham and so he began to say I am Abraham so he spoke because he believed that's what Paul said I believed and therefore have I spoken so I'm declaring that I am Abraham because I have believed he wasn't trying to believe he had come to believe and so nobody could argue with his name he couldn't listen to you. If you asked him, why are you calling yourself Abraham at this time? He didn't have to give you an explanation. It was impossible for him to try to convince you. He didn't it didn't matter to him that you were in the senses and he was in the spirit. So he said, I am Abraham. Abraham is my name. Father of many. He had come to believe. And the believer is a possessor. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, who against hope believed in hope? That he might become. Huh, this is wonderful. In other words, look at it. He says, that he might become. He believed in hope. That he might become. Isn't that what we read in Romans chapter 10, verse 10? With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto that he might become. He declared his faith. So he was catapulted to that position that he had seen. With the mouth, confession is made unto. You catapult yourself into that position. That you have seen in your spirit with your mouth I told you keep talking let no one stop you keep talking keep talking I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I walk in righteousness in the name of the Lord Jesus I walk in righteousness see the devil has been defeated stop trying to defeat him we don't need to defeat the devil because he's already been defeated somebody said well I'm wrestling with the devil you don't need to wrestle with the devil you have put him down there is a fight of faith now 
And you have to understand when the Bible talks about the fight of faith and when it talks about our warfare, what is this warfare? What is this, this fight of faith? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He says we wrestle not. What do you mean? Wrestle. The word wrestle there doesn't mean that we're fighting them. It's not a fight. He's referring to the fight of faith, not fighting the devil. But he's talking about the demon spirits of darkness trying to sway you from the truth. And that's what the fight of faith is all about. That's what it's all about. It's not like we are engaged with satanic forces in a physical combat. It's not that way at all. We are not engaged with satanic forces in the physical, physical combat. No. When it talks about the, the, the wires of the devil, what does he tell us to take? He says the shields of faith. He didn't say take your shield. He said it's the shield of faith. It's not a physical shield. Faith is your shield. You understand? Faith is the shield. It's not that there is a shield. All right? It's not talking about a shield in the realm of the spirit that is applied by faith. Come on, come on, come on. Are you hearing me? There is no shield in the realm of the spirit that we need to take by faith and use. No. Your faith is the shield. That is why it is called the shield of faith. Your faith is the shield. Oh, come on here. And then it says the sword of the spirit. What is it? He says the word of God which you proclaim, which you profess, which you declare, which you confess and announce. He says that is the sword of the spirit. It's not that there is a sword in the realm of the spirit that you declare I take now in the name of Jesus the sword of the spirit uh -uh. when you speak the word of God that is the sword when you stand the ground in faith and proclaim the word in faith that is the shield you don't need to picture any shield and try to catch it I confess I received the shield of faith no 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 your faith is the shield. Now let me just go to Second Corinthians for a moment. Second Corinthians in, in the third chapter. Did I say the third chapter? No, no. It's a tenth chapter in the third verse. Second Corinthians, the tenth chapter. Oh, we are victors in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He says, though we walk in the flesh, that means walk in a human body. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down. Casting down what? So in Tigris, Kovra, Dalaman, the Gisco, Shalahate. Casting down imaginations and every high thing. Oh, 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 glory. 
that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now I want you to understand that this must not be taken out of context. We're going to read it in its context to begin to understand it. I'm reading from verse 1. We started from verse 3, right? Most of us know how to quote it from verse 3. Not many of us know what is connected to it from verse 1. But when you begin to read it from verse 1 and then beyond verse 5, you get to understand. All right, verse 1. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence I'm based among you, but being absent, I'm bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence where I think to be bold against some which think of us. Now, watch this. Some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So, he's not talking about everybody. He's talking about some because he refers to some people in the church. Now you have to understand where this is all coming from. This whole thing has to be understood from 1 Corinthians. You're going to have to understand the whole subject from 1 Corinthians into 2 Corinthians to know what he's dealing with here. Now, he says, you can, you can understand that there's something wrong somewhere. There's a problem somewhere, and Paul is referring to this thing. So, verse 2 again. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. He says, I'm coming to you, and I, I plan to be bold against you, but somehow, he says, I know what you think about me, that um, I'm bold when I'm away. And I'm not bold and I'm present. So, but this time, I'm coming with boldness because I've, I've got to talk to some of you who think that we are walking according to the flesh. See, he's talking to the church. To the church in Corinth. There's an issue. There's a matter up. And he's upset about this thing. So he says, some of you think that we are walking according to the flesh. So, he goes in verse 3 to say, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this as we go on. So, he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but man is regard to the pulling down of strongholds, etc., etc., etc. Then, in verse 5, I want you to notice, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness, or in a readiness, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? See? You notice? He's asking them, do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, as he belongs to Christ, even so are we also Christ. We also belong to Christ. See, the man is upset about something. So when he says we, he's not talking of everybody. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. I get you all now. You're so quiet on me now. Let me read that verse 7 into verse 8 so you see. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again that as he is Christ even so are we Christ for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority uh -huh, of our authority which the Lord had given us for edification and not for your destruction I should not be ashamed you see that he's talking about our authority which God has given to us for your edification not for your destruction God gave us authority for your edification so when he said, we, us, he wasn't referring to everybody. He was talking about the leaders. 
And I said, you have to study from 1 Corinthians into 2 Corinthians to know what he was talking about and who he was referring to. How many of you are understanding it in context right now? Thank you. Now, this will become clearer. Go back to verse 3. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The word war there is Greek, stratomai. It means to lead soldiers in an expedition. It means to lead soldiers to war. So he's not talking about fighting the devil. He's talking about strategizing. So when we tell you what to do, he's saying, we know what we're dealing with. We are operating from a high realm. Because we understand the manipulations of Satan. So he says, the authority which the Lord has given to us for your edification and not for your destruction. So the leadership that we give to you, we are given from a high realm of the spirits. Our military leadership, he's saying. Strategizing in the realm of the spirits. It's not according to the flesh. It's not according to our brains. We are not thinking it out. We're not trying to reason out with our senses. We understand these things from the realm of the spirits. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not lead and guide and strategize according to the flesh. Why? Because the weapons that we use are not man-made. That's why we have to strategize according to the spirits. We have to function according to the spirits. So when we give instructions, they are coming from the realm of the spirit. God says, Moses, stretch your hand over the water and divide it. How, how, how? The weapons of our warfare. Egypt can't believe it. It can go through their minds that the Red Sea was split wide open. They have never heard about it. They have never thought about it. They have never imagined it. And right before their eyes, the Red Sea split wide open. They couldn't believe it. Could this be God? They thought they were standing right in presence of history in the making. But they thought, well, we didn't see nobody. We only saw Moses ahead of them. So they watched the children of Israel go through. The Bible says, which the Egyptians are saying to do with drowned. The weapons of our warfare are not cannon. Our strategies are different. The cannon ones began to say, oh God, what are we going to do? Moses, you want to destroy us? They looked at the water. They said, no way. They looked this way and that way. We can't escape. We are dead men. What they forgot was that Moses was strategizing with Almighty Jehovah. (laughs) Hallelujah. You see, Jehovah already introduced himself to Moses. He said, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your, your fathers knew me as El Shaddai. But I am Jehovah. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. I'm not going to function as as, as, as Shaddai, but as Jehovah. I'll lead you out of bondage. I am Jehovah. Oh, come on, shout amen, somebody. The weapons of our warfare are not cannon. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hey, yeah, yeah. One of our pastors told me the other day, there was a building that they wanted for church. And the man, the agent who was in charge of it said, no way, I can't give it to you. He made up his mind he wasn't going to give it to them. Well, he tried to make it very difficult. And several times they had a meeting with him. No way. So what? The last time they came to the building to take a look at it, He said they got together 
he and his brethren and they began to pray they began to speak in other tongues this man who was upset with them was going away while they was praying and then he looked up there he couldn't move any further are you hearing me that day he made up his mind he was going to give them the property can you shout hallelujah the weapons of our warfare are not canal hallelujah we are strategizing in the realm of the spirits don't worry about your imaginations of fear he says these weapons are mighty through God to pull down strongholds to cast down imaginations and bring down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God can you shout amen somebody strategizing in the realm of the spirits and you know when we get into that war room and we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost we 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 pray in the Holy Ghost go in a God oh hallelujah hallelujah Joshua learned it from Moses when it was time to take Jericho, Joshua knew he couldn't sit down with the elders of Israel to be planning on how to take Jericho. He couldn't look for the oldest men in Israel to say, how are we going to take Jericho? No, he couldn't count how many swords they had to know how to take Jericho. He was waiting for something. The same God that appeared to Moses. And before long, the angel of the Lord stood before Joshua and introduced himself and said, now here is the strategy. Here is the strategy. Hallelujah. It's not for the swords. He said the swords will wait. All those weapons will have to wait. No swords no shields no spears no staves they will all have to wait so what are we gonna do he said here is the strategy because the weapons are not man-made we're gonna bring down these walls he said you're gonna go around the walls one time each day for seven days on the seventh day you're gonna go around seven times and each time you're going around nobody talking at the last time the seventh time of the seventh day he said you blow the trumpets and you shout the will of God. Hey, hallelujah 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 He said, when you shout, he said, these walls that you see before you, they will fall down flat. 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 Oh, glory to God. I don't know the kind of walls you are facing in your life. Maybe the walls of cancer. Maybe the walls of financial impossibilities maybe there are wars in your business maybe there are wars in your academics but I'm telling you we are using the weapons of our warfare they are not canal and the walls who come down flat oh hallelujah glory to God Woo -hoo! oh shandalabasha katabaya Glory to God. Sit down. Tell somebody anything is possible. Tell three people anything is possible. Anything is possible. Tell another three people anything is possible. Go with a guy. Yeah. 
is possible. Hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. Hey. Ah. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Hey. Anything. Anything is possible. You can do anything. You can be anything. Anything is possible. Hallelujah. My faith is working. My faith is working. My faith is working. I said, My faith is working. My faith is working. It's 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 working. Glory to God. It's working. It's working. It's working. Glory to God. It's working. My faith is working. It's working. It's working. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory. Glory. My faith is alive. So rich, so prosperous, so strong. Hallelujah. Huh. Hallelujah. Sit down. Verse 18, Romans chapter 4. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He believed in hope to become what he saw. How did he do it? I told you yesterday about different kinds of faith little faith great faith or much faith weak faith and strong faith there can be a lot of faith that is weak and we said for weak faith to become strong you've got to exercise it all right now verse 19 and be not weak in faith weak faith is faith that is not being exercised faith that is not being used that guy who says i know but i know but you don't have to say it out i know we are blessed but must we tell everybody we've got to tell everybody I know you're rich, but must you say it out? You know what the devil does to many people? He says, don't say anything because the manifestation is not in your life. So don't say it until you can really prove it. Uh-uh! You've got to say it! You've got to say it! You've got to say it! 
that lying devil don't believe him he tells you not to say it until you have it the truth is you have it and until you say it you may not see it so you've got to say it Somebody said, I used to say it, but when I didn't see the reality, I stopped saying it. You made a mistake. That's when you should have said it more. Hallelujah. Look at this. And be not weak in faith. He considered, hey, uh, he considered not his own body. Brothers and sisters, this is faith. I told you the other night, faith is not the denial of facts. We do not deny the facts. But we deny the fact, the ability or authority to control the circumstances of our existence. That's exactly what Abraham did. The Bible says his body was as good as dead. As far as giving birth to children was concerned. But he considered not his body. He didn't deny the fact that his body was old. But he denied his body the ability to control his believing. Hallelujah. Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. I was listening the other day to one of our programs and, uh, and she gave a testimony about a, a certain business, uh, a certain interview that she went for. It was already over. They had selected the people they wanted to select. And she said, uh-uh. When I was praying, I got Rema to go there. She got there. They said they have already done the selection. They didn't send her an invitation letter for the interview. They already invited those they wanted. She was not shortlisted. She was not invited. She heard about it and went there. When she got there, because she considered not the letter. In spite of the fact that they had already selected those they wanted it was already final she considered not their reports they said all right come inside they took her inside she did her own interview several people sat down to interview her when they were through they canceled the ones they had selected before <laughs> and gave it to her be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead look at it when he was about a hundred years old he did not consider his own body which was as good as dead neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb Oh, hallelujah. But, look at this. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Unbelief makes you stagger. Unbelief makes you stagger. Here you are, you're praying and believing. And then you raise your, uh, your head and you see, it looks like, man, this thing is getting worse. You are staggering now. You are staggering. The Bible says he refused to consider the facts. He had the facts. He refused to consider the facts. He set aside the facts. He staggered not at the promise of God. He had God's promise. So he held on to God's promise. That's what we're doing in our ministry. We're holding on to God's promise. 
Hallelujah. We're holding on to God's promise. He said it. And we're holding on to it. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The Bible says, but was strong in faith. Giving glory. Giving glory. How do you give glory? Let me explain to you. You know, in our lives, we need to look for the glory of God and give him the glory. Stop looking for your sickness. Listen, if you didn't hear anything tonight, hear this word. Stop looking for your sickness. Look for your healing. Listen to me. You know, in life, you feel, hey, mm -hmm. I better find out what this is. You're looking for your sickness. Look for your healing. Many don't look for their healing. If you have had problems in your body or problems in your life, can you recognize that that swelling, that growth is reducing? The Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory. How do you give glory? Every time he looked at his wife and said, honey, you are looking fresher. He said, I can see the change. Your body is changing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can see the changes. Can I tell you something? You know some people, they have a pregnancy, and every time they lose the pregnancy, you know, They say, oh, I saw blood. Oh, you are looking for the wrong thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stop looking for the wrong thing. Don't let fear get a hold of you. He staggered not at the promise of God. Through unbelief, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He recognized the changes. You know, Elijah was waiting for God. There was a sound and God was not there. He was waiting for him. Everything that could bring God didn't bring God. Where was God? God was in the still, small voice. God didn't show up in the way he expected him to show up. That child that has not been able to walk. When you woke up in the morning, didn't you notice that his legs had moved and changed position? You didn't observe. When you should have been giving glory to God, this leg moved. I saw it. It moved. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says Abraham believed in a hope to become. With the mouth, confession is made unto. You want to move from point A to point B. You are going to have to speak yourself to that point. You're going to have to talk yourself to strength. You're going to have to talk yourself to that place that you want to be in. They refuse to promote you. Forget it. Promotion doesn't come from the east or west. 
or from the south, it comes from God. So what are you going to do? Talk yourself to the Tell somebody, use your mouth. Tell the other person, use your mouth. Use your mouth. Use your mouth. The miracle is in 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 your mouth. Hallelujah. Don't look. Hold on. Don't look for your sickness. Look for your healing. Every day, give him glory. Say, I see that I'm getting better. I see that I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I see my progress. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe you are a trader. Why don't you see your progress? He staggered not at the promise of God. There was an opportunity to stagger, but he refused. He staggered not, but was strong in faith. He was strong in faith. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I can see the changes. I can see the changes. The rashes are leaving my body. I can see the changes. I can see the changes. I can see the changes. My finances are increasing. I can see the changes. Hallelujah. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Hey. Listen to this. I want you all. I want you all to read verse 20. Verse 20. Want to go. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully persuaded. That what he had promised. He was able also to perform. Can you shout amen somebody? Hey, hey, glory to God. My God is able. I said my God is able. My God is able. I am fully persuaded. I refuse to stagger. I refuse to stagger. My God is able. I am fully persuaded. I refuse to stagger. And so I'm strong in faith. I see my progress. I see my healing. I see my prosperity. I see my promotion. I see, 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 I see. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. I have the ability of God in me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 The anointing is upon me. Go with a God. Hallelujah. Go with a God. Oh, hallelujah. The anointing. Woo -woo. I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. Glory to God. 
I'm getting greater and greater by the day. I'm getting greater and greater by the day. I'm getting greater and greater by the day. Come and shout amen, somebody. The Christian is a world practitioner. Hey, I, I don't know if you got that clearly. He is the doer of the word. In the Old Testament, they were told to obey the word. Obey the word. We are not told to obey the word in the New Testament. We are told to do the word. There's a big difference between obeying the word and doing the word. Are you hearing me? Obeying the word means doing according to the commandments. Doing the word in the New Testament is not obeying a commandment. It means acting out what it says. Hey, listen. Paul says, ye are the epistles of Christ. Do you know what that means? He, he means you are living letters. You haven't gotten it. You, you didn't get that. Can I get that back to you? You want to hear it again? All right. Who is Jesus? The Word. The living Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All right? You know all that. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus Christ is the living Word. Now the Bible says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, that live it and abide it forever. So we were born again by the Word. Now if we were born again by the Word, what are we? Dogs give birth to dogs. Goats give birth to goats. Come on, talk to me. So when the Word of God gives birth, what will you be? You see, you are the Word. Come alive. See, you are the expression of His life. The Word of God is at work in you. So he calls us doers of the Word. He says, be ye doers of the Word, not hearers only. Doers. Let me give you a simple example. Paul is at Lystra in Acts chapter 14, when you read from verse 7 to verse 9. Paul is at Lystra. He's preaching the gospel. And he sees a man important in his feet. And the man, the Bible says, Paul perceived that the man had faith to be healed. So he said, man, stand up. He didn't pray for him. Why? Because he preached to him the gospel. The Bible says he preached the gospel. What's the gospel? That look, you have no reason to be crippled anymore. The Lord has taken that evil out of you and given you his health. So what? Gospel means if you could not walk, you can just get up and start walking. So that's the gospel. That's the gospel. It looks hard, but it's so simple. That's the reality. He has made us supernatural beings. You've got to understand. He says, we are partakers of the divine nature. If you had a growth in your body, you don't have to cry. You don't have to run around, doctor, doctor, doctor. No, leave that for the babies. The Nepios. <laughs> you put your hand right there and you say, growth in the name of Jesus. Get out. Get out. You don't have to give it any further concern. It's got to go. How did Jesus talk to the tree? He wanted figs. The Bible says there were no figs on the tree. So he said, tree, nobody will eat fruit from you anymore. And walked away. The Bible says his disciples heard it. The next day, now when he said it, the tree was still the same. Nothing looked different. But the next day, as they passed by, the tree had dried up from the roots. The Bible says, Peter, calling Peter the apostle, calling to remembrance, said to the master, Master, behold the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. What was Jesus' response? Have the faith of God. King James' translation says, have faith in God. He said, have the faith of God. In other words, have the God kind of faith. He spoke to the tree. 
The next day, it dried up from the roots. When you talk to the cancer, it dies from the roots. You've got it. You've got it. Listen, you've got it. You've got the authority to speak in his name. The life he has given you is an extraordinary life. No wonder he says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the hope of glory. You can have a glorious life because Christ is in you. No more shame for your life. No more reproach in your life. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity or cowardice, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. That means I've got an intelligent, oh boy. I belong to God's super intelligentia. Mine, oh my. I'll never be a fool. I'll never talk foolishly. I, I'm, I'm, hey, come on here. He says he's given me a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Sound, I'm sound. I'm sound. Say it with me, I'm sound. I'm sound. You see? Thank you. How many, how many times did anybody tell you you were sound? If you didn't do something that seemed so wonderful. They don't give that to you, but God gives it to you. Amen. That's the way you talk to your children. That's the way I talk to my kids. I tell them, you're the best in school. Amen. That's what I tell them. I said, don't forget, you're the most intelligent in that class. That's what I tell them. Amen. Amen. Say, I'm sound. I say, I'm sound. Say, I'm sound. I'm sound. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're sound. Because the Holy Spirit, oh my goodness, the Holy Spirit has come to reside in you. You're sound. And do you know what? That's what it is to do the word. It means, it's like what Jesus said. Oh, my goodness. He says, search the scriptures, for they are there which testify of me. He said, the scriptures testified of him. The scriptures testify of you. Amen. Every day you say, I'm sound, I'm sound. Don't wait for anybody to say it about you. God already said it. Let me show you the principle of the kingdom. You ready? Turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. You are going to be so successful, so powerful, so rich and buoyant, so influential. Shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. All my closest associates, they're number one. That's the truth. The number one everywhere. Number one. You ought to be number one. Because I seed them with the word of God. You're number one? Yes. Say this and I'm number one. I'm number one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. This book will make you number one. All right, Hebrews chapter 13. I want us to look at it. You know, sometimes people speed read the Bible, and when they speed read the Bible, they lose a lot of stuff. Okay? Now, I'm going to read it slowly, and I want you to notice something that's difficult to observe. And no wonder you probably never heard about it. Let's, verse 5, let your conversation, the Greek word translated, Conversation actually means manner of life. Let your conversation be without covetousness 
and be content with such things as ye have. You know, that's so nice for religious folks. They say, yeah, that's, where they, that's, that's what they know about that verse. But look at something else. Which is bigger. For he hath said. Huh. Uh, hey, hey. Listen. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, there's a nice blessing there. I know you're, you're catching, but that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you something deeper than that. You ready for it? Okay, let's go again. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. After that, what do you have? Is that a full stop? What do you have there? You got a Quran there, right? That means it's not true yet. What's next? Read the next part. So that we may boldly say, stop. Stop. I want to, hold on. I want to show you something so powerful in these two verses. God is showing us an extraordinary principle of the kingdom of God. He says, for he hath said, so that we may boldly say. He hath said so that we may boldly say. That tells you something. The reason God said what he said is so that we may boldly say something that is consistent with what he said. So he had said, God has not given you a spirit of timidity or fear or cowardice, but of love, of power, of a sound mind, so that we may boldly say, I'm sound. I'm sound. I'm sound. I'm sound. I'm sound. You see that? I can boldly say that. I'm sound. I'm sound. I'm sound. So I get into the privacy of my room and I walk around in my room and say, I'm sound. Boy, I'm sound. The Holy Ghost has walked in my brain, has walked in my mind. I'm sound. I'm sound. I'm sound. If you don't proclaim, Success in your privacy, you will never have it publicly. Now that's another important thing. Listen, the government will never make you rich. Forget it. No government was designed to make anybody rich. Hey, come on, are you kidding? It doesn't matter who's in office. PDP or PRP or PPP. Doesn't matter which one is in office. They'll never make you rich. They'll never make you successful. Success is in your spirit. It's in your spirit. It's in your spirit. Say it again, I'm sound. Say it again, I'm sound. My mind is sound. My spirit is sound. I'm sound. I'm sound. Oh, that's a good one. Praise oh. God. Oh. Hallelujah. Imagine when you have that consciousness. Every time you read anything, you know, you know some people say, when I read, I don't remember what I read. They say, I don't know what is wrong with me. After I finish reading, I just forget everything. Uh-uh, stop talking like that. Start saying, I'm sound, I'm sound, I'm sound. <laughs> You'll be amazed how you retain memory. Hallelujah. Listen, if you were born of the Word of God, oh boy, this is important. Every creature must remain connected to its source to be alive. Fishes came from water. They must remain connected to water to be alive. If you take them out of the water, doesn't matter whether your bed is made of gold, if you put that goldfish on your bed, it will not survive. It will not survive. Cattle came 
from the ground. You can't put them inside the sea and expect them to survive. They've got to be connected to the ground. Their food is on the ground. It's here. Your human body came from the dust of the earth. It's got to remain connected to this ground to remain alive. Your spirit came from God. It's got to remain connected to God to be alive. When you're born again, the Bible already showed you, you were born of the Word of God. You must remain connected to the Word. Whatever the Word says about you is what you say. Now, when you study the book of Acts, you understand something. There are certain terms used for the church, for the Christians. You also see this through the epistles. Christianity was called the way. Christianity was also called the confession, the great confession. Why are we called by these words? Because of what the Bible says about us. It doesn't matter how quiet you are, you're supposed to be a talker. Not talking nonsense, not just talking and, and, and trying to be, uh, no, no, no. You talk the word. Did you ever read about Jesus? He was always talking. He was always talking. You know why you have a mouth? You think it's for eating, coca meat patch. <laughs> Every now and then you're sipping something, eating something. Your mouth is always calling for food. That mouth is not for food. And it's not for cursing people. So it says it's for praying. It's not for praying either. That mouth was given to you to chart your course in life. This mouth you're seeing. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Don't talk your fears. Talk your faith. The Christian should not talk his fears. He should talk his faith. Now, people who are often very sick, listen to them very well. You notice they talk sickness a lot. They talk their fears a lot. Hey, they say there's flu. They say this flu is moving around. Ah, we don't know what is going to happen. They always talk like that. Oh, I, I'm not so well. I'm not. They hardly like to say that they are well. They love sympathy. How are you? Well, okay, somehow, so-so. All kinds of answers. They never boldly say, wow, I'm great. Anytime you ask me, how was your night? I say, great as always. Great as always. I always have a great night. Great as always. Great as always. Cool. I'm gone for good. Well, we don't know. I say, we don't know what is happening. Nobody knows tomorrow. <laughs> That's failure going on rampage. Are you hearing me? That's failure going on rampage. Some of you are going through certain health conditions right now that you don't need to go through. You don't require any, you don't require any medication, anything. If you would just accept what I'm sharing with you, you'll walk out of this place perfectly normal. Because that sickness came as a result of your fears and your wrong communication. If you would change your communication tonight, you will start enjoying health at its best. Some people say there's five minutes madness for everybody. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> see, everybody has his own five minutes madness. Have you heard that before? I heard that when I was a kid. See, everybody has his five minutes madness. Some others say everybody is sick somehow. Nobody can be perfectly healthy. Where do they get these theories? Theories that have kept them in bondage. It doesn't matter who gave you those theories. Reject them. Are you telling me Jesus was sick somehow? If he wasn't sick somehow, he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Don't you understand that? 
That means the same life that he has is what he has given you. I am the vine. He had the branches. Can it get better than that? No. I got the life of God in me. God in me. I got the life of God in me. No, imagine if for the last 20 years you've been talking like this. No, imagine the life. Listen, my dad is here. He'll tell you. I said, my dad is here. He'll tell you. I've been talking like this for more than 20 years. Are you hearing me? I've been talking like this for more than 20 years. Now you're quiet. <laughs> I've been talking like this. I got the life of God. And it's not something I stumbled upon. It's the word of God that came alive in my spirit. When I got a hold of it, I endorsed it and confessed it. And I said, I'll never be poor. Now I found out something in the word of God. I'm a success. What I've been saying, I'm a success for many years. While I was still a student, I was holding what I called success in life seminars. I still have the tapes. I was teaching success in life seminars as a schoolboy. How to succeed in life, life. <laughs> As he got the tapes. Hallelujah. Because I found out this stuff in this book. It works, brother. It works. I learned that I could talk to my car. I could talk to my body. I could talk to my shoes. I could talk to anything. I could talk to my money. I could talk to anything. I found that out. And I started doing it. That's your way. We are sons of God. Hey, wasn't that one of the points I gave you? Was that the last one? Point number six. Yeah, bona fide, legal, and vital sons of God. He says, now, beloved, now are we the sons of God. We are not going to be. We are not about to be. It's not a promise. It's a statement of fact. He says we are the technon of God. Technon. And I explained the difference between technon and heotasia, adoption. He says we are the technon of God, meaning we are vitally born of God. We are his reproduction. Do you understand? Not just legal sons. Legal sons are hewers. We actually came out of him. We have the same life. We are as much the sons of God as Jesus was the son of God. What boldness we should have. What life we ought to be living. See, some people are concerned about when they do wrong, you know, what about how can a man live without sin? The sin problem is no longer your problem. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 declares, sin shall not have dominion over you. Become righteousness conscious. I, uh... Okay, that, I've just let out number seven. So let me tell you about number seven. You ready for it? Okay, let me give it in, in a way you can write it down. It was number seven huh? that was left, right? Ho, 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 glory. Now, there's a difference between this one. Now, you remember we said the Christian is the righteousness of God. All right? There's a big difference between that and this one. And I explained how he is the righteousness of God. Now, this one is the Christian has been made righteous with God's righteousness. Oh, boy. Mine, oh my. Mine, oh my. Think about it. You know what it is to be made righteous with the righteousness of God? All right. You ready for scriptures? Let's go back to one of them where we got the one we, 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 we read yesterday. Romans chapter 3, verse 26. Can you read it for me?
Are you there? Okay, read it for me. Verse 26. Uh huh. Oh, glory to God. That he might be just and what? The justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Now, that's a, lot, a little blind to us. That's why I gave you the, the Greek words yesterday for justification and then righteousness. Now, this time, what it actually says is that he might be righteous and the righteousness of him which believeth in Jesus. He is the righteousness of the man that believes in Jesus. He says, God himself has proved himself righteous. So in that way, I am his proof of his righteousness. He has declared himself, shown himself to be just. And he is the justifier, the righteousness of the man that believes in Jesus. He is my righteousness. I am made righteous with his righteousness. Look at Romans chapter 5. Read verse 1. 